perfect. Ah, that's better. Morning crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, I've been doing quite a lot of fabrication work over the last sort of 10 months, which has involved lots and lots of drilling holes and countersunks. The countersunks are what you just saw on the, the intro video. Uh, onto these plates here, and each plate has got six. And it's absolutely critical on the depth of the countersink. Otherwise, believe it or not, the bolt doesn't sit nice and flush. You don't want it too deep. You don't want it below the surface. But also, you don't want it too proud either. So critical we get it just right. And when I first started doing them, I had a few problems. Uh, I found that the, uh, the countersink bit wouldn't last that long. Maybe a couple of hundred holes, maybe 250 if you were lucky. Uh, and then it started to just go off and it was, you're putting a lot more force on the lever uh, to actually to, to do the countersink. And I found that I was going beyond the datum, the point which the depth, the depth, maximum depth point that I'd set on the machine and it was making the countersinks too deep. So I had to come up with a solution. And I found that when I was using some kind of cutting fluid, and this is the Forch drilling and cutting foam, it's really, really good by the way, uh, and you use hardly any of it, one, one can last for ages, uh, I found it was a lot better. So it started me thinking, I wonder how it affects the bit, you know, without using the foam compared to using the foam. So, previously, this is a while ago now, probably on the second batch that I did, uh, I saved a, uh, one of the one of the bits here, look, that's done 240 countersinks, and it, that's the point where it started to lose its edge and I was struggling with it. Uh, and then I switched to a new one and I did 360 cuts using the Forch drilling and cutting foam, as you saw in the video. Very, very simple. Sure, it adds a little tiny bit more time to the job, but it makes a massive difference. So I thought what we would do is have a little look under the microscope camera that I've got on the laptop. Uh, this is the one here, look, it's pretty old, in all honesty. You can get much better ones now, which has got far better resolution, but it's still pretty good, to be honest, for what it was. This was about $25, you know, peanuts. I thought we'd take a little look at each of the two cutting bits under the camera and see if we can see much of a difference on the cutting edge and see how worn uh, the one was that we didn't use foam compared to the one that we did use foam. Sure, the one that we used foam did do a lot more, you know, about 50% more cuts, but it was still working fine. So I'm expecting to see quite a difference. And I've been using the Forge foam for quite some time for drilling normal holes. But when I did some research on doing countersinks, some people were saying, oh, use a cutting, a cutting lubricant, you know, cutting oil. And some were saying, don't. So I was a bit confused, but I found it works much, much better with some kind of cutting fluid on there. Okay, let's head over to the bench and uh, I've got the, the laptop set up and we'll take a look. Here we go. Used. Let's get it set up. So this is the one, first of all, that didn't have the cutting form, the 240 cuts. Let's pop it in there. We need to hold it really, really still in order to get the camera to camera set up. So we'll stick him in there. Wow, pretty good. Okay, now this is only oh geez, it's very sensitive is this camera, so I can't even lean on the bench. But this is the cutting edge of that bit of one of the three. Um, cutting edges on the bit itself and we can see there's a big chunk missing here look but this is only part of that cutting edge I'm going to see if I can move the bit across so we can see a different part and it gets really tricky because I never quite know which way to go not that way there we go look okay so that's going down towards the front edge so I'm just going to try and oh, golly try and focus it better for you it's extremely delicate there we go, look. 
So that's the front edge, and again, we can see it's lost a bit of a chunk down there. Sorry about the, the white out, see if I can change that a bit. There we go, that's not too bad, is it? So you can see the rough edge coming down here, and then if I scroll, if I go back, which I think is oh, not that way, live TV. There's that chunk we're missing, so let's even get a bit further up. Uh, so the chunk's right at the top of the screen now. Let's just get it focused back in. It's obviously the height changes, you see. This is the problem. Not that way. Dum -dum -dum. Oh, there we go, look. So we can see another... Oh, it's just moved a bit, hang on. Bear with me, it's extremely delicate. It's not a particularly good setup, to be honest. There we go. Okay, that's not too bad. Right, so again, we can see just how rough the edge, the cutting edge is, it's pretty knackered to be honest, isn't it? And all these all these score lines as well going across. Um, and like I said before, this is the one, for those that jump the videos and skip, this is the cutting edge of that bit uh, without using any kind of cutting oil, cutting foam, lubricant or anything. It's just a dry cut, 240 cuts, and that's what's left of the cutting edge of that bit, which is pretty bad to be honest, isn't it? Right, we've seen the one, uh, the, the first cutting bit that's done 240 cuts, uh, countersinks uh, as a dry cut, no cutting foam, no cutting oil, no nothing uh, on those six mil plates. And it, it is quite a chunk of metal it takes out. And we saw on that particular cutting edge, there was a big chunk missing and it's pretty rough all the way down. It became unusable. Uh, so we, you know, had to basically stop using it and get a new one um, so now let's take a quick look at the one that's done 360 countersinks using the forge cutting foam and I'm hoping and I haven't checked this before I'm hoping we see a significant difference between the quality of the cutting edge that remains on this one compared to the one that we didn't use any foam on let's take a look Right, swap this one out, stick him back in there, keep things organised. And this is the second one, oh, I've not even cleaned it, god damn. I'll give it a clean, you see on there look, it's full, still full of swarfs. So I'll give that a really good clean off so we can see the cutting edge clearly. My eyesight's crap, so I can't tell you how good this one is. Not until we get under the camera. Right, that looks pretty clean to me. Let's take a look. Hulkley Dokley, right, we'll stick him in there. I'll just choose one of the edges. Looks about right. There we go. Let's see what we can see on the camera. I think I've got the focus just about right. It keeps moving around, it's so delicate, this thing. Okay, so I can get my little probe in there. There we go, look, that's a, a little scriber. You can see along here, look, that there's really hardly any, there's a little chunk missing out of there, look, but the rest of it is actually a much, I'll tell you what, I'll do it on the screen because it is actually easier. So it's pretty sharp all the way down. We should actually get a new one. I wonder if we've got a brand new one still in stock we could take a look at. Uh, as a comparison again, but this is much more of a, a straight edge with a lot less chunks missing out of it There is a little chunk just up there. I'm going to try and move it down a bit. This is extremely difficult. Just bear with me We're not really set up for this kind of stuff. Um, so I think we need to go that way. Nope, we need to go that way Now it's going to go out of focus So there's that chunk right in the bottom left hand corner now Let's just try and get the focus back. There we go. Unfortunately, it's not it's not parallel to the lens, so we, we're always going to get a bit out of focus. But there's the chunk missing down here. But the rest of it, again, looks pretty good. There's a couple of bits down here, look, which have scalloped out. But in the main, it's significantly better condition than the, than the other one. Very interesting. And no surprise, then, if it's kept its sharp edge how well it was still working. Right, I have found what I think is pretty much a brand new one. Now, the only difference with this is it's on a, a hexagon shank. 
uh, I've found that they don't slip in the chuck and we again on the on the milling machine if it if it's spun in the chuck sometimes the bit would recede into the chuck and it would throw you set it would throw your depth out completely so I went for this style uh, on the more recent ones uh, which is the one that you saw cutting in the in the mill earlier on and um, no more problems the chuck grips this much better than the round bits and I think they're a bit cheaper as well so let's take a look at this one which if it has been used it will have been used with the forge spray but I have a sneaky suspicion this was this one was only used for deburring so very very light work so this should be in extremely good condition it'll give us a benchmark essentially of what a new one should look like here we go well there here we go this one obviously has been used it's got little tiny bits of metal on it but you can see here the cutting edge is still extremely good apart from this little area here a little chunk being taken out there look so obviously it has been used it's done a bit of work but i think we'll find that that chunk is in you know the rest of it should be fine because with it being used for deburring it's always just a very small amount of work um or a, the work is is focused on one particular part of the cutting edge given the diameter of the hull which i think was 9.5 mil um, so it's only going to be used in that one locality. So if we look down here, look, see how good all this cutting edge is here. It's amazing, to be honest. Right, let me see if I can move it a bit further down. Not too sure which way to go, but we'll give it a go. There we go, look. Right, so we're, going to, we're heading towards the point now. I'm going to try and keep, I've tried to get it so it stays in focus, making the cutting edge, uh, you know, horizontal. Uh, don't lean on the bench, Andy. <laughs> oh, God, right. So again, you can see up here, this bit's done no work at all. It hasn't touched anything yet. It, that's, that is the condition of that cutting bit pretty much from when it was made, um, which is pretty good. I mean, there's a couple of bits down here that's sort of a bit iffy as well. But in the main, pretty good. So there you go. My gut feeling uh, in using these countersink bits has been realised and was right using cutting fluid or cutting foam in this case from, this one's from Forge drilling and cutting foam thanks Jared um, really does make a huge difference and we saw on the one that uh, had done 240 cuts this one in here uh, the cutting surface the cutting edge was pretty knackered to be honest it was basically blunt we call that uh, and this has to go in the bin it, it really is just junk I mean I'll keep it for posterity's sake you know been in a video and who knows I may use it I may come back to that again on another video so I never throw anything away to be honest um, the one that's done 360 cuts still usable I'm gonna keep that the only reason why I stopped using it was I wanted to keep it for a video but secondly I started to have that problem of it slipping in the club in the chuck so that's why I switched to these don't repeat yourself Andy okay stick that in there um, so if you're looking to do any countersinks or any drilling uh, of any any quantity, it does make a difference using some kind of cutting fluid or cutting foam. Sure, you're not going to notice if you're just doing the odd hole now and again. You know, that drill bit's still going to last you a few years. But if you're doing an intensive sort of manufacturing sort of process where you're drilling hundreds and hundreds of holes in a day, sometimes even thousands, um, then realistically, by using some kind of cutting fluid, um, you know, you're going to save the bit and it's going to basically continue to work for you and it's going to be cheaper. You know, these things are about, geez, I think these are about $50 here in New Zealand. So they're not cheap. Uh, a can of cutting foam, I don't know, 20 bucks, $25, 30 bucks. It doesn't matter. I mean, this, these cans, I can do quite easily well i'll do 100 plates so 600 uh, countersinks and the can really feels hardly any lighter um i tend to only buy a couple of these a year so that's how many holes you can get out of one of these and i, I drill thousands and thousands and thousands of holes and so does mrs mechanic you know we're on a roll we've each got our own pillar drills plus we've got shelled in the mill uh, we can really crank out all the holes you know so um it's bloody good lasts for ages very very cheap and it saves your bits simple as that really okay crew well that brings us to the end of this video we've 
seen the bits under the microscope and we've got conclusive proof that using the cutting foam will uh, may help to maintain the sharp edge on your drill bits or in this case a countersink. Countersinks have to work extremely hard. There's a lot of heat. You saw right at the start all the smoke coming off. Uh, and I think, actually, and Jared might correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure he'll jump onto the comments. Uh, Jared actually is the importer for Forge here in New Zealand and the distributor. Um, but by having the fluid there and it evaporating away, it burning off, it helps to keep the workpiece cooler and the cutting bit cooler and therefore, you know, it's going to last longer as well. Okay, crew, well, if you enjoyed this video, why not click on the subscribe button? That way you're not going to miss any future ones. Uh, there's already, oh, don't forget to ring the bell, obviously, then you get a notification. Um, there's already about 550, 600 videos on the channel. So, uh, you know, if there's no new videos for the next couple of weeks, which there probably won't be because I'm busy, um, then, you know, dig into the archives. There's an awful, awful lot of stuff out there uh, that you, I'm sure you will find interesting. There's a huge array of videos as well, lots of different stuff, motorcycles, cars, trailers, welding, fabrication, all sorts of stuff. Um, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through those portals. Or why not, as becoming more and more popular now, flick me an email. Uh, Andy Mechanic at live.co.uk. Uh, I'll do my very best to get back to you. I don't have all the answers, but I'm happy to try and help you. Uh, and just bear with me, because again, I, I don't respond immediately very often, because I'm busy, you know. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you found this video helpful, then why not give a bit back? You can do that through PayPal or Patreon, and there's links to those two on the main page, um, the home page of the channel. Uh, in the banner, I think it is, little tiny icons, click on one of those and it'll take you through to whatever you need to do. Any donations that are sent through are gratefully received and those that already have, sincerely, thank you. Okay crew, time for me to crack on, I've got a few more plates to get done, there's about, I don't know, 10 more to do. Mrs Mechanic's busy sandblasting all day so she'll need these later on to get done and then I've got some spraying on Saturday, fantastic. All right, crew. Cheers. I'll run out. And we get the